So welcome back to another pre-lockdown project from February. And this week, I'm gonna show you how me and my husband helped my parents create a porch for their bungalow renovation. And we fitted it between the front doors to the house and the garage, and it tied it all nicely together to give it a more integrated look. If you remember, just before Christmas, it was originally a flat roof that linked the two together, and then they replaced the whole roof and made it a pitched one at the same time. So first things first, we need to remove the old drain cover that I think was from old guttering, and now it was never originally right in front of the front door. And these paving blocks are tightly fitted. So I had to start with an old chisel and a hammer and gently try to release them. Then I could upgrade to a large pry bar to remove the drain itself. I had to do this carefully because we wanted to put them all back. And we had a lot of spare from turning this alleyway into a walk-in wardrobe room. The other perk of this job that we noticed is it started to rain. And because I showed you recently how we'd help my parents install a carport, we were dry as a bone the whole time. It's raining and I didn't even know after a very little bit. I definitely love working under shelter. Then my dad gave me some scrunched up plastic to place inside and block it up. And I scraped any rubbish off the sand that was there because we needed it nice and smooth to put them back. And then I placed another piece of plastic on top before adding some soft sand and levelling it with my feet. And we also noticed that some of the other pavers needed to come out because they were just too low. So it meant topping up the sand and just gradually doing this, checking it to make sure they were the right height. And now time to pop the pavers back while everything's in situ, which is definitely not my favorite job because while they're already there, it's a tight space and you need to make sure that you're matching the running pattern. And what also didn't help was all the pavers were different colors and sizes. And it's pretty much like a jigsaw puzzle. You have to take the time. It's a matter of trial and error, adding more sand when needed, using a straight edge to see if they're all consistent with the other ones and tapping the sides to shuffle them along to squeeze any in. But we got there in the end and then would sweep some more soft sand in the gaps. Now onto the porch itself. We'll be recycling an X-Display UPVC door and window, which will be sat on top of this sill. And to get an idea of where we're gonna be cutting it down, we temporarily place the window section on top, then the bay pole, which is like a corner post. Oh, and I had to remove some existing trim that was still stuck down with silicon on the top. But once that was temporarily in place, we could see what gap was left over next to the brickwork. So that gap would be measured, transferred to the base of the sill, and then I'd cut that off with a handsaw. My dad had also brought some treated decking as well to fit underneath and slightly raise it, which I also cut down to size. And before that all goes together, the door section was originally part of an old frame that he cut off. I thought this was a great money saving way to do it because any raw edges will be covered with trim later anyway. And once that was cut, it was then placed against the wall for another visual to get an idea of which way the door was gonna open. And we decided to rotate it and have it inwards. Anyway, we set that aside to cut the bay pole to the same height of the door. This has aluminium inside though, so I had to use a hacksaw for this. Then my dad added some trim, which I think is the same one that I pried off the top of the other window section and I pilot hold and screwed it to the bay pole and cut the excess off again with a handsaw. Then it was time to pop it back and then get an idea of where we were gonna cut the bottom sill, which I know this was a while ago, but I think it was the depth of two structural pieces of timber stuck together. And after that was cut, flipped it over, placed the two decking pieces on top, made sure it was straight and drew from underneath so I knew where to cut that excess off. That smells nice. Put it back and screwed it to the sill. And now my dad is making sure it's evenly positioned against the house and checking with the spirit level and propping it up a little bit where needed with some packers. 
and he told me to especially add some in the middle section where it would be walked on. So there shouldn't be any gaps creating weaknesses. And when we double checked the position again with a tape measure, just in case we'd accidentally moved it. So once we'd got that right, we marked on the brick walls with chalk for reference if it moved again and we could line it up. And using a hammer drill, I'd drill straight through it, including the pavers and screw with some masonry screws, also known as spac screws. You'll see us using these time and time again because you don't need roll plugs. Then to adding the UPVC window section. So just like my double glazing video a few weeks back, I applied some clear silicon along the sill. It's inside those two lipped sections. Place the window frame on, making sure it was level on both sides before fixing it into place. Although that's when my dad noticed the brickwork wasn't level. So he had to take it down and shave a bit off with an electric plane before carrying on. And once that was done, I made sure it was lined up with the sill correctly in those two lips and screwed the frame and the sill section together then checked vertically with a spirit level and drilled and screwed to the brickwork. Then to the opposite side, screwing it to the bay pole, which also has a lip around it, so make sure it's within that. it was time to fix the door in. So after my dad cutting some structural timber down first, I drilled and screwed that to the brickwork on the house and then attached another piece. And exactly the same as the window section, I siliconed and screwed the door frame to the sill, the bay pole, and the wall, but through to the wood. And after checking whether the door closed and locked okay, it was a matter of adding all of the window panels. With it being early afternoon in February, it got dark very quickly. But it's much the same as that double glazing video I referred to. Popping the window panels in, using a special plastic hammer for double glazing, and tapping in the beads to trap it. And yes, with it being a second-hand door, we did change the old lock for a new one. Then finally, onto the gap above, because I didn't know where this project was going. My parents have done this a lot in the past. So I was asked to create a wooden frame with structural timber that would be later attached to the window and the door using screws. And you can see I've got two pieces stacked together because I needed to measure the gap between that and the polycarbonate roof, and also work around the carport roof wooden frame as well. So I took those measurements and built it in the bungalow. Then we slot it on top, then screw to the carport's wooden beam and the front wooden frame that my dad made. And to cover it, it was cladded with UPVC fascia using special plastic headed nails that we've used in previous videos and also cut with a coping saw to work around the roof's beams again. And because we ran out of time, my parents returned without us the next day to seal everywhere with white silicon, create a seal between the pavers and the sill and also hide that wooden section next to the house with trim. Oh, and replace the broken glass on the old door. Anyway, I think this is an awesome job that just goes to show you don't have to pay full price. And my mum also made it look brand new again by cleaning it with a UPVC solvent cleaner, which I've used in the past and works a treat. But we've still got some work to do on this corridor section, so hopefully I'll get to show you that soon. I just love now that someone can walk from the kitchen to the garage without leaving the house, so it feels like it's all one room. Anyway, Hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon.